Okay. There's a lot of people that, uh, let's say, piss and fight about what is the uh, best lens and or the best focal length for street photography. Let me give you an empirical, uh, objective, logical, and intelligent as the owner of a crap load of lenses <laughs> statement on what I think is the best street lens, especially for DX, but also for FX. Oh my god, well that doesn't make any sense because one's in a crop factor and the other one isn't. <laughs> There's a reason for that. Something also you have to, to uh, consider is that most DX cameras have a tight pixel pitch. Okay, what that means is that given if the lens has very high res, this is where high resolution comes into play. Uh, given a tight pixel pitch and a lens which has a really awesome resolving power, you have more translational information per square millimeter of sensor. What that means is if you have a really sharp lens and you're shooting in a DX camera, that means you can crop the piss out of it and still have a beautiful image that you can make a nice big 20 by 30 print with. Yes, this is the same reason why live why bleh, while it, <laughs> that's tough to say, isn't it? Why wildlife photographers uh, use, use <laughs> too much caffeine. Why wildlife photographers use a ten thousand um, dollar four hundred millimeter a two eight, for example, on like a five hundred dollar Nikon D seventy one? It doesn't make any sense. Why are they using such an expensive lens on such a cheap ass camera? It's because wildlife photographers crop the piss out of their shots. So. In street photography, let's run down the objective reasoning. Okay, why this for Nikon? The 24 millimeter f 1.8G is the best choice for FX and DX. Well, that's impossible. How can that be the best street lens, much less the best focal for two different formats of camera? Well, let's run it down for you. Let's first talk about the premise of street photography. Roaming around, let's say, some little smoky town in Germany, you know? Olga's walking around with her beer steins, and uh, Hans is uh, st stumbling down the street. Whatever sort of street photography you do. Yeah, I actually do love street photography. That's why I laid his contest with street photography. Well, it's not my reasoning. It was your choice to have the contest to be street photography. There are a lot of times when you actually want to switch uh, from wide-angle view or... Uh, immediately turn the corner and uh, get something uh, within frame uh, of a person or some sort of event that's going on. So switching back and forth, A, you want to prime. Most uh, street photographers agree uh, that it's either 28 millimeter on full frame. 28 millimeter or 35 millimeter is an awesome uh, focal uh, for uh, street photography. Now on a crop sensor this basically is a 35 millimeter. Okay. So it's the perfect lens for DX cameras. The resolution is insanely high. The autofocus tracking is insanely fast. So a lot of street photography comes and gone. There's the moment. You missed it. Okay. So autofocus tracking is very important in street photography. But you also want to have a wide enough angle of a lens if you want to point it across the street. Oh, my God. Well, 35 millimeter. I really only want to get that person. But the event is going on. It's about to come. It's about to pass. But is that an issue? Well, if you have this... A lens like on the Nikon D500, for example, you're able to crop the hell out of the shot and have plenty of resolved details for a beautiful print. Most street photography is certainly not based upon incredibly high resolution. I mean, some of the best award-winning street photography is really grainy. I'm not saying that all street photography needs to be grainy and gritty and blown out with high ISO. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Some of my favorite images are like that. But 35 millimeter, we're still cutting... Uh, the leading edge, cutting the bleeding edge of uh, being wide enough, but 35, plenty wide enough, and that's what this is, field of view, on a DX crop sensor camera. And you're, and then you're about to say, well, for DX, why not just choose a 20 millimeter, like the 20 millimeter 1.8G, which you've said is insanely sharp and incredibly fast. True. Too much distortion. There you have an equivalent field of view of 20 millimeters. However, too much distortion, not enough. You want to crop into a, a bunch. Uh, say you point the camera across the street, something is about to come. A moment's about to come, about to pass. You grab it and you crop in. There, it's no, n no. This is it. Now, on to full frame. We're going to use this on, like, say, Nikon D810 or Nikon uh, D750, D3, whatever camera. Um, resolving power obviously is the same. Autofocus tracking is the same. Now, say Nikon D810 or 24 megapixel Nikon a D750, D600, D610, use this as a street lens. The, res the resolution on this is so incredibly high 
that if you need to crop in, there's no difference between cropping in and zooming. And someone is going to argue with me about that. Well, sure, there is a huge difference between zooming and cropping in. Okay, this is about actually, I do a lot of cropping on shots. You know, if the moment comes and passes, I don't want a bunch of uh, extraneous stuff. You know, half of the composition, if you have no control, you can't tell someone on the street, you know, please hold there while I back up or uh, back up or, or step in five feet and frame this awesome, awesome moment. You have no control. We're talking about street photography, damn it. You know, you can't like, oh God, you know, this moment's about to come and pass. I'm going to freeze time. I'm going to step in a few more feet. That way I've perfectly framed my shot. No, in street photography, you don't have that option usually unless it's a static object like a building or something or somebody's leaning up against the building, but you may not want to get that close. That's another aspect of, for full frame use, 24 millimeter. Why not a longer focal length? I can actually be further away. Then you have an issue of rounding the corner, and it's like, oh, well, now I've got a 50 millimeter. Someone told me a couple days ago he thought 50 millimeter is a perfect lens for street photography. I was like, are you crazy? Hell no. That is way, way, I mean, that's like, for street photography, that's like hardcore telephoto. <laughs> it's 50 millimeter for, for like spur of the moment street photography? No, not a chance. Um, I, 35, I mean, I, I agree with everybody that 35 is uh, the pretty much agreed upon ideal for street photography. 28 is fine. I don't care if people say 28 or 35 millimeter. I mean, I don't give a damn between the two. The important, the important thing is that it has high resolving power. You can crop the hell out of the shot because you cannot, you know, pick the moment in street photography 99 times out of 100. You can't, you know, uh, zoom with your feet since you're using a prime. You know, you have to grab the shot when it appears. You can stick in continuous high and brrr, grab the shot, fine. Um, but uh, it's it's impossible to agree with 50 millimeter. 28 millimeter, 35 is fine, which is what this is. 35 millimeter DX camera, like the Nikon D500, has resolving power, has the autofocus speed to gap capture anything. That this is also the perfect ideal uh, lens. Uh, in uh, my opinion, based upon objective empirical criteria and the facts that I've laid before you. Not 28 millimeters for full frame, rather 24 millimeters for full frame. Which would I rather take to the streets? One that can capture everything with high resolving power and ultra fast autofocus tracking at 24 millimeters? If I need 28 mil millimeters field of view, since the resolution on this, this lens is so goddamn high, I can crop into 28 or to 35 and have a perfectly awesome usable shot. 36 megapixel camera, Nikon D810, you want me to crop into 28 with this lens and it's insane res resolving power? Who gives a shit? Easy. 35 millimeter, same situation. Easy, no problem. Why the hell would I want to pack around to 28 or 35 with mediocre or good resolving power when I could pack around this and crop in to 28 or crop in to 35? With the 28 and 35, if I round the corner and I want a wide angle view of you know most of a person's body or all of a person's body, on a full frame camera, 28, gonna, 28 isn't going to cut it, and 35 is like, you know, we're talking approaching telephoto. You're around the corner, there it is. I want to capture all this that's going on. 35 is too much. 35 is in too close, in too deep. So, based upon those uh, objective, undeniable criteria and uh, existential facts of street photography, and of the nature that the moment comes and goes just like that, and the fact that this is insanely fast, and uh, the fact that the result, uh, the result, yeah, excuse me, the res, too much coffee. <laughs> the resolution is so incredibly high. This is my pick for the ultimate street lens, FX or DX. Also, further still, um, if I wanted one awesome prime lens on my Nikon D500. You know, and I'm traveling Europe, which God knows I'll maybe make it there someday. Too damn expensive in Europe, by the way. Um, one awesome prime lens to pack around on uh, my full frame camera or my DX D500 downtown. It would be this, a 24 millimeter 1.8 Genia core. It would be this lens, this lens, this lens. Yes, the best lens in the world that I have is the 35mm f2 Distagon, but that's a manual focus lens. You know, I'm really fast on manual focus. If it's simply architecture and stuff like that, I got no issues at all with manual focus. But if it's going to be for street photography, you know, you know, I don't, you know, even the best manual focusing skills in the world, well, a lot of the time, not an issue with manual focus, but it does pose a problem. 
Um, but this would be my choice. If I was like, I'm not, honey, I'm going to go downtown and do some street photography, downtown photography, you know, in some little town in Austria or something like that, it would be this, a 24 millimeter, 1.8 G Nikkor. This lens new is 800 bucks. I think right now on sale it's like 750 bucks, so it's 50 dollars off right now. Someone's going to go, oh, this lens is made in China and it's got a real plasticky feel on it. And I'm going to go, you know, you're absolutely right. This is true. It is, however, an incredible lens. And so that's it. That is my choice for street photography and downtown prime lens. I'm not saying it's an architectural lens. I'm not saying it's a perspective control lens. Obviously, I'm not saying that I'm saying downtown. I said downtown. I didn't say architectural photography because someone always wants to pick a bone with me. Well, you know, you said downtown. That would be my choice for architectural photography. I'd use a tilt-shift lens on a Bogan tripod, and then I would use my intervalometer. Yeah, I'll shut, shut the hell up. <laughs> People do that to me all the time. They say crazy stuff like, I'll say one thing, and they will totally hear something different. It's like, you know, I said one thing, but you heard something else. I love how that works. Human communication. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like this video and drop me a buck or two. Tell me jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever tickles your pickle. Love to hear from you. I never ask anybody to subscribe, ever. I never ask anybody to click the like button below, ever. So that's me, and that's my personality. I don't like you. You're fat, bald, ugly, and I don't like your personality. I'm like, good. I'm the devil, you know? There you go. Okay, I'm the devil. That's your answer right there. You know, <clears throat> nobody is chaining your eyeballs to any specific thing on YouTube. You should watch what makes you happy. Even if it is disinformation by unintelligent people that uh, kiss your butt. But that's what people like. People like being lied to. That's what I found out in these many years on planet Earth. People like being lied to, you know. It's not about being truthful or helpful. It is about being a sweet-talking, uh, you know, sycophant. And li I like you. Please watch my channel. Please click the subscribe button, bu button below. And I'm going to tell you things that you want to hear. Not necessarily the truth, but definitely things that will stroke your fur. You know, you, you pet the cat fur the right way. Brrr, brrr, brrr. A puss cat doesn't like it when you pet his fur the wrong way. And that's how people are, you know? It's not about the truth. It's like, always pet the cat fur the, this, this way. You know, never, never the other way, you know? Which is often the truth. It's like, I'm going to pet the cat fur the other way. Because this is the truth. Kitty don't like that. <laughs> people are just like pussy cats. Some people are just like pussies. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.